Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Matt Rhodes, and I'm here with Dr. Richard Bernardo, and we're here to discuss the future dialogue exercise protocols, which is based on uh, future uh, change leadership. And we're going to discuss the protocols here so that you can learn how to model this with your team so that you can work with them to sort out a variety of different futures to a variety of different um, challenges that you're experiencing within your school and district. And you're going to see how um, this can be beneficial to you and your team um, so that you can create plans and steps towards solving these uh, challenges with solutions. So um, we're going to have uh, Dr. Bernardo go through the exercise protocols and then him and I will model how that works. Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm pleased to be able to present to you uh, what we call futures-based change leadership uh, processes. Uh, I wanna emphasize before we go too, too far into this that uh, the scenario development process that we're demonstrating very quickly and very briefly is, uh, is kind of an end product. It's what we call the three-dimensional uh, process that depends on two-dimensional futures-based thinking as well, which this article doesn't uh, talk about all that much as, as such, but we can talk to you about that in other ways up, up the road. Essentially, when, when you put a scenario together, you're really writing a story. In this case, you're writing a story about the future, how you think the future will probably be. And I need to emphasize that, that adverb, probable. We're talking about probable scenarios not necessarily preferable ones, not yet. And so what a, a, the scenario development process does is enable you to really flesh out, get a third dimension on what uh, the, the issues that you need to consider, in our case, about the effects of COVID on education in the past uh, two, three, or three years, uh, it will take you through. Uh, there's a, the article offers you, I think, something like 14 points to consider. We, I'm going to just uh, deal with some of them very quickly. Obviously, you're going to choose a topic. You're going to create uh, two intersecting axes, an x-axis and a y-axis. In our case, the, the model we offer below uh, goes from plus to minus vertically and from plus to minus uh, horizontally, and where one axis deals with the uh, dispositions towards change, the favorability towards change, and the other axis uh, deals with the uh, extent to which the, the group has this, the skills, the competencies to bring that off. And, those, and what emerges is four quadrants. Uh, and what we're going to do, what you would do is put your, four, your stakeholders into one of those four groups and then direct the stakeholders to consider how the group uh, that you've been assigned to, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, uh, minus, minus, and so forth, is going to dictate uh, the kind of thinking you're going to use to flesh out what you think that scenario is going to suggest. So in our case, we, we, given, we gave you the COVID premise to consider. There are others like equity, teacher shortage, and politicization that uh, clearly in other cases, certainly where you can consider the futures to go with that. But in the end, uh, you're going to write a story. And the story can be all kinds, any kinds of forms, uh, which the article uh, will describe in greater detail here. So Matt, yeah, wanna... so, yeah, so now let's talk a little bit about going through this and using the plus and minuses, competencies and dispositions to future um, relating to the topic of uh, COVID-19 in schools and education. So I'm going to have Dr. Bernardo take one of the quadrants and then I'll take another. He's going to do the minuses on competencies and plus on dispositions, and I'll do the plus on competencies and minus on dispositions. And Really quickly, just to review, competencies mean just the ability to do something. Dispositions means essentially you're yearning or wanting to make change or to do something. So um, let's jump into it. So uh, go ahead, Dr. Bernardo, with your quadrant. Okay, so again, thinking out loud, uh, here's what a, a potential, a probable scenario could be, given the conditions that you, the group that you put me in, which was a minus on competency, so it just, the group certainly just doesn't have the skills to do what we'd like for them to be able to do, but a plus on dispositions, which is to say they 
want to do the right thing, but actually just don't know how to do that. And so think about a school board that, uh, think about a school board that wants to, to create a uh, group that's been hit with uh, uh, the COVID epidemic, pandemic, as we all have been, that's put enormous limitations and stresses on what uh, school systems can do to keep children educated, to keep them moving along uh, against the expectations of, uh, of uh, the state education policies and of, the, of their own children's needs as well uh, as of societies. And so it's, it's very possible, uh, probable, I should say, that uh, they just don't know how to do this. In other words, the, the school board and the, the leadership may have dropped the ball, in fact, did drop the ball on this and didn't particularly prepare uh, its staff, its stakeholders, and, and even the children for that matter, to know how to use technology uh, on the, uh, in the online environment at home or in some sort of hybrid approach. And what's happened is that some students have computers, some don't. Some students don't know what to do with the computers that the school system's given them. And uh, in, in addition to that, most students haven't had any experience with this. And speaking of experience, that's also true for the teachers some teachers have, been, have had some success with that, but most teachers have not consistently, uh, systemically been trained to do this. And uh, there's a lot of uh, floundering and uh, hand wringing and a lot of uh, consternation. On the other side of the coin, uh, everybody wants to do the right thing. Everybody wants to do the right thing by, by the children and, and by the teachers. And yet the ball was dropped because they really had planned a future for this. They had, planned, they had failed to plan against uh, any contingency that would require teach, uh, children to be learning on a home. Or for that matter, they have been trained to plan for schools that may in the future not even meet all that often face-to-face -face as such. And so the school board is, uh, is not happy with the superintendent and neither is the superintendent happy with uh, her teachers because the teachers have no problem saying that they want to do the right thing, but they're also very uh, concerned by the fact that they uh, simply haven't been given the resources, the training, the support to do what they want, that, what the, it is that they want to do. And nobody's happy uh, short term. I would think this scenario would play out over time and say, well, over time, teachers would step up to the top and most of them anyway would begin to share among each other and perhaps make it right. But in the end, uh, this quadrant, this scenario is about building the plane while it's flying. Matt? Yeah, so let's go over to my quadrant and discuss plus on competencies and minus on disposition. So this is essentially the reverse of the previous quadrant where um, say that the same school district, the, the school district in various schools has a number of innovative school leaders and teachers who know how to use technology and integrate instruction well. They've begun piloting a program in two schools for online and blended learning strategies that has gone very well and has been um, uh, liked by teachers, students, and their local communities. However, the school board, the superintendent, and a few other schools in the district do not want to incorporate the successful program because they feel it is not needed. Therefore, at the district level, it was not adopted and not um, every school in the district has been successful in incorporating 
technology and being able to provide instruction in various settings. So essentially here we have certain, there's a couple of schools that are doing really well, but maybe a number of schools are floundering as a result of the district not fully adopting the successful program that was a, you know, piloted in the first year of the pandemic, but uh, the beginning of the second year of the pandemic, the, it wasn't adopted district wide. So uh, essentially, uh, you know, number of schools are building airplane as it flies and you could be floundering. And then a few schools in this uh, scenario um, could be successful, but essentially we have a group that has the competencies in place, but as a whole in the organization, there isn't that disposition to change the entire um, organization to um, utilize this program. So that would be essentially the probable future. Okay, can I just to, the, just to crown some of this off? That was a great, great scenario, Matt. Uh, so what would happen is the, the, the group, the whole as a whole, would develop four scenarios along the lines of what we just just demonstrated. And then what the group would did would do is they would vote for the most probable future, the one they think is most likely to happen, against the analysis that's been developed by the by the four groups. That's very important to understand. And, the, and the, the article goes on to explain to you how to take that probable future and decide whether the probable future that you have identified, agreed to, uh, the extent to which that matches up with or aligns with what you want to happen. Now, there's a gap between what the, the probable future seems to be uh, established versus what you want to happen. That's where the rubber meets the road in terms of the group now needing to figure out how do we re, how do we adapt to the probable future or do how do we transform to our preferable future and that's a whole another conversation but the scenario piece the scenario development three-dimensional approach is what will uh, bring you to that point in a systematic and a very deep thoughtful kind of way Definitely. And everyone on your team will have these different probable futures that you can compare, analyze, and then you may have additional data and evidence to incorporate into this as well. So um, you may have a lot of different opinions and things to further discuss. And that leads us to finishing this um, future-based change leadership um, dialogue. We hope that you enjoyed this and hope you enjoy reading the article as well as hopefully um, you know, begin incorporating this practice um, with your teams and in your district and schools. Thank you so much.